Hey everybody, Joy here. It is Sunday after church, April 26, 2020. And you said you wanted to see this dress when I got it done. I finished it yesterday, hung it in my closet. I put it on this morning and realized that I've got the same neck problem I had before. So here's a tip. Here's a tip. <laughs> when you change something on the garment, you've got to go back and make the change on the paper pattern as well. Okay? So, I suppose the neck looks fine to most people, but I don't like it. It's up too high. It's up too close. I need more. I don't know. It makes me look like um, I don't have any shoulders or my neck is short. I don't know what it is about it, but I just don't like this kind of a neckline. <laughs> So this is the Fit Nice Top, and all I did was extend it 28 inches, which was too far, and I ended up cutting off 2 inches. <laughs> so I need to make that note on the paper pattern, too. So one of you said, tell us how you change the neck. I mean, I just did it last week. You think I could remember something that long, don't you? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my French Curve. French Curve. French curve, French curve. This is the French curve. I have two of them in this room, but one of them is hiding. This one is called Fashion Ruler. I will put a link below if you want to get one. I am an associate on Amazon. I'm not sure what exactly that means. <laughs> they send me these emails all the time that are complete Greek to me. I don't know if I've made one penny yet. <laughs> But anyway, if you guys use my link to go there, then I'll get a couple cents if you buy this ruler, supposedly. Okay, so it's called the Fashion Ruler, and I'm just going to place it. And I think I remember my numbers were 12 and a half or 12 and a quarter and 21. So, I will put, here's 21, and here's... 12, I don't have my contact in. Here's 12 and a quarter. So right there, from here to here, that's the curve that I want on this neck. So it's going to bring it down a little bit lower, and it's going to take the shoulder over a little bit further. So what I can do is just cut off all this work I've already done. <laughs> I totally stabilized it with the stay tape, uh, front and back. What did you use for stay tape? I don't know if I can link this. But I use this stuff called Design Plus. I got it at a show years ago. Years ago. This one just happens to be black. So that's the one that I used. And it's like half inch, half inch, maybe three eighths. Yeah, it's three eighths inch. And it's um, fusible. So that's what I use. So it keeps this from stretching. I wish I hadn't put it on there because maybe the stretch would make it look better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I am just going to cut off this neckline right here and um, down to that new neckline and then I'm going to refinish the neckline. So, look at me now. <laughs> I need to take a picture but I don't know how to do that with that camera from here. It just hangs, it just hangs. I'd like to put some waist darts, but I'll probably just let it hang because it's more comfortable. <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a minute. Well, I took my dress off and then I realized that I was in my bra and panties. <laughs> so this was still laying on my long arm, still waiting to be hemmed up and have the sleeves, the armholes finished and the neck finished and the hem put in the pants. <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is way back from the wide leg pant challenge. And I still haven't finished it. And I think I will go ahead and finish it today when I finish this neckline change. Okay, so let's get the pattern out first. Fit nice front. Fit nice front. Slap your ruler down. 12 and a quarter, 
to 21. Yep, there it is. I definitely did not change the paper pattern. So let me move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Here's my fit nice front with the bus dart that I put in it. Move down into the bottom. Now, before I make this dress again out of this, I'm going to take the bus dart out of the bottom and put it back up here at the top because I would like my dress to be straighter and not be so full. For one thing, it's heavy that way. You know, knit hangs and sags. And so, if I took this extra fullness out of here, or I could just cut it off over here on the side seam, that would work too. If you cut it off over here at the side seam, the bus dart would still be in it. How that works, I don't know, but Peggy Sager says it does. <laughs> okay, so you probably can't see that very good. Let me put it on top of this blue skirt that also has to be finished. Okay, this is the neckline. This is the neckline that you just saw on me in that black dress. I like this neckline much better. So, I'm going to take my fashion ruler and I am going to put it down here because I happen to remember the numbers, which in itself is a miracle. Glasses applied. <laughs> okay, 12 and a quarter and 21. Wow, that is really different, you guys. Really different. I can't see how that can even work. Wow, but it can. 12 and a quarter. Put the 21 there and the 12 and the quarter up here, but oh my gosh, I just can't believe I changed it that much. But I guess I did. Wow, that's really down there. Wow. Isn't it funny how you don't trust yourself? It's like, I know that's what I did, 12 and a quarter and 21, but then I think, oh my goodness, that's really low. <laughs> 12 and a quarter and 21. That seems awfully low. Where's my chest? Here's my apex right here. Now you can always check that out. You don't want, well, some of you might. <laughs> I don't. I actually could. I don't have cleavage unless you're looking at my backside. <laughs> but some people, some people actually have some. Um, so anyway, I'm going to mark that and then I'm going to hold it up on me. I just happen to know, and this is an iron off friction pen, 12 and a half to 21, 12 and a quarter, 12 and a quarter. It seems like I'm coming awfully far over here on this uh, neckline. And you know, 12 and a quarter and 21, you could start way over here with 12 and a quarter and put the 21 down there. You could start over here with the 12 and a quarter and put the 21 up here. Peggy Sagers always acts like that's the easiest thing in the world to do, and it is not. And you can move that all over the place. If I move it over here where I think I want it, this is going to be way down here. But that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go hold this up in the mirror. All right. That's 12 and a quarter to 21, right there. See the pink line? That looks way lower, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this on the garment. And then I'm going to put the garment back on me and see how far that actually is going to go. Now remember you add a seam allowance to that line. You add a seam allowance. You don't cut on that line. You have to add a seam allowance to it. All right? Here's a reminder. Remember that this right here has to be straight. Has to be straight. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a V-neck. That's real close to a V-neck as it is. <laughs> yeah. So this has to be straight, or you're going to have to finish it with a facing. Well, there's other ways you can finish it too, but easiest, just make sure this is a straight line right here at the beginning for about half an inch, and then you can see I added my 3 8 inch seam allowance. I know it says half inch seam allowance everywhere else, but 3 8 is much better at the neckline. So I'm making a note, 3 8 inch. Three eight inch. I'll be back. I'm going to cut the neck down. Now you also have to cut the back. Don't forget you have a back and a front. Here's. Can't see what you guys can see. All right. Here's the back. So I'm going to take line up the armholes. 
line up the outside edge. You didn't cut off the outside edge of the shoulder. It's fine. Besides, it's got a sleeve in it. I'm not changing it now. But I've got to change the inside edge right here because we're moving this neckline farther away from my neck. Okay? So I'm just tracing where the front is now. And then I'm going to redraw this back with the same... You can't sew without one of these, y'all. The same fashion ruler. I'm going to redraw the curve right there. So I'm going to match up the curve that Judy Kessinger put there. And I'm going to kind of match it. Straighten it up. I like the back lower anyway. Okay? So there's my new back. And that is with the seam allowance in it. So I need to move this down 3 8 inch. So I don't think, oh no! I have to add a seam allowance. Why am I adding it below instead of above? Because the seam allowance was already added on the top. See here, the seam allowance is added on the top. And so when I laid this down here on this shoulder and I drew my new line, the 3 8 is already in it. So you have to think about stuff like that. And then I'm going to cut this. So the next time I make this garment, the neck will be right. I should have done this last week on the other garment. All right, so I'm going to get out the blouse, my shirt, my dress. Where is my dress? Right here. I'm going to get out my dress. I'm going to lay that new pattern up on this neckline, and then I'm going to draw it with chalk or something. <laughs> and then I'm going to cut this out and redo the neck. For those of you who like a visual, I am taking the dress. I folded it somewhat in half lining up center front, center front, center back. Then I went underneath the arms and I matched up the side seams underneath the arms. Right there. Put the arms together, matched up the side seam, okay? Because I've got to know where center front is. And center front's different on a garment than it is on the paper, on me, because I always raise for my low shoulder, okay? So now just fiddle with it. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Fiddle dee dee. Could I take this and just do it right on here? Sure, I could. But I trust myself better to use the paper pattern. See, I could put that right there. And I could put that right there. And that right there. And then I could just draw that line just like that. But since I've already done it on the paper, I'm going to use the paper. All right, take your front, line up the seam line, fold the seam allowance out, seam allowance out, line it up to the seam line, because your seam allowance is gone. This is already a made garment. Line up center front. All right, so now I'm going to take this white chalk pencil and mark this here. That's with the paper pattern. Yep. And that's with the seam allowance up above it. I've got to add the seam allowance. Very, very good. And I'm going to be able to cut that off. Yay! So watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. You want to see how brave I am? Let me get a smaller seam cutter. My um, rotary cutters are dull as a hoe because this kind of a mat, this kind of a cutting mat, which is called a Mega Mat from Quilter's Rule. It isn't near as good as those green mats. In fact, I'm gonna go get a green mat to cut this on. Much, 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 much better for these rotary cutters. These mats get lots of nicks and cuts and they don't heal well. All right, Joy, let's go. Let's go. I'm kind of sawing it back and forth. There, look at that. Look at that. I just cut that neckline down. <laughs> so now we got to do the back. And the back is a whole lot easier than the front because you just use the cut you've already got there. And I'm going to pray that I don't screw it up. Yes, we went to church this morning. The sermon was about worry. How worry is like sitting in a rocking chair. You're doing something, but you're never going to go anywhere. 
So since none of us can go anywhere, we're all worried anyway, right? Okay. Yeah. This is going to lower the back quite a bit. Now come up into here. Come, come. Yeah, I think I've gone a little bit far, but the rest I'm going to do with scissors. Okay, so you can see I've cut the back down. That's the back neck. I've cut the front neck down. And now I'm going to carefully cut this part with scissors in here. Because all those seams are in there. Yeah. So I'm going to very carefully do that with some sharp scissors. And I'm so excited because I cut off the other neck finish. And I don't have to rip anything out. So that's very nice. That's always very nice. Very, very nice. Remove the pin and cut. There we are. Okay, guys. Now that took a few minutes. But if that's what you want to do, and you can see I didn't cut very much off. See, it's only, you can see it better on the white side, it's only that much. It's only that much. And on the shoulders, it's just very little. But this is going to open up the whole neckline for me, and I think I'll like the dress a lot better. I may even take the side seams in all the way down. We'll see. When you sew garments for yourself, you're always dressing, undressing, dressing, undressing, dressing, undressing. I cannot do this on a mannequin. It doesn't act the same on the mannequin. The mannequin doesn't move like I move. The mannequin doesn't have skin. The mannequin doesn't have hips and boobs that, that move and change. And you understand what I'm saying? Ever said, why don't you use your mannequins? I could put this on a mannequin and put it on me later and absolutely hate it. So to me, the best mannequin is a womankin yourself. Yourself, your very own body. Okay. Now another thing I can do to make this neckline more stable is put the little band on it. So where the band sticks up a little bit like it was before. Right here. This one had the band sticking up on the neckline. See the band? This is the back. So I will do that too and then that'll come up a little higher into my shoulders and a little higher here and then it won't hang off my bra straps. So. This is my last try on until I get the neck completely finished again. So I'll be back. All right, I decided I might as well show you how I'm gonna finish the neck for my new seamstress that asked me, how do you finish a knit neck? You can finish a knit neck lots of ways. I could just serge it, fold it in 3 8 inch, and then top stitch it. But that's not gonna be very stable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my curve runner if you don't have one of these, stop what you're doing. Go to Amazon, there's a link below, and buy you one of these right now. You have to have one of these because they're wonderful. Whoever invented this was really smart. It's a rolling ruler, and it's absolutely wonderful. I will put a link below, of course. Yes, now that I know how to do link duty. <laughs> Okay, so here's my neckline. I have simply folded my garment in half. It was laying out, laid it half. This is the center back. This is the center front. This is the neckline. I'm going to take my roly-poly curve measurer and I'm gonna put my glasses back on so I can see the curve measurer. Er, er. And I'm going to measure this neckline. Don't stretch it. Make sure it is flat and not at all stretched. Goodness, this stretches anymore. It's going to be down at my navel. All right, so we're starting at zero, and we're starting on the 3 8 inch line. We're not measuring it out here on the edge. Some people will tell you to measure it on the edge. Some people will tell you not to. <laughs> I'm the not to people, okay? Measure at the 3 8 inch line because that's the stitching line. Roll, 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 roll. So that went past 12 almost to the 3. 
I'm going to do it again. Start at zero. It only goes to 12 inches, but it'll keep on rolling. Okay, there's 12 inches. There's 13, 14, and 3 fourths. 14 and 3 fourths inches. So you write down 14 and 3 fourths times 2. Why do we take it times 2? Because we have it folded in half, and when we open it up, it's twice as long as when it's folded, okay? So, 14 and 14 is 28. 3 fourths and 3 fourths is 6 fourths. So that's 1 and a half in my book. 1 and a half. So I'm going to take 28 and add 1 and a half, and that's 29 and 1 half. Now I'm going to go over to my calculator and I'm going to take 29 and a half times 7 eighths. And I'm going to find the answer. Here's my calculator. We've got to turn it on. Now, we're going to take, I already forgot what it was. It was 29 and a half, wasn't it? 2, 9, dot, 5, times 7, divided by 8 equals 25.81. Now, just in case you make a lot of mistakes and you're not sure, do it again. Okay, but there it is right there. 29 and a half times 7 divided by 8 equals 25.81. Let's do it one more time. 29.5 times 7 divided by 8 equals 25.81. Get the same answer twice, you know that's a good answer. 25.81. Now I'm going to iron this all off of here because I'll do it every time because every fabric is different. Every fabric is different. So, well what does 8-1 mean? What does that mean? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm going to say it's 25. It's a little over 3 quarters because 3 quarters would be 0.75. And so it's between 0.75 and 26. So I'll just cut that in half. And that's what I'm going to cut my strip out as, okay? How wide am I going to cut it? I want my little thingy to stick up 1 half inch. The seam allowances are 3 eighths inch. So let's figure that. I want one half inch sticking up. Seam allowances are three eighths inch. So that is, how do you figure that? Three eighths and a half. Well, that's hard to say. Uh, you have to do it in eighths. So how many eighths are in a half? Four. So that's four eighths and three eighths is seven eighths times two because we're going to fold it in half. So 2 times 7 eighths. So 7 eighths is almost 1. And so I am just going to play like that's 1. Because it's knit, it doesn't matter. It's going to fold over to the back and you're going to top stitch it. So I'm going to play like that's 1. And I'm just going to make it 2 inches. Okay? That's how wide I'm going to cut. That's how wide I cut it the other day. Because I don't know how much 7 eighths and 7 eighths. Let me see. That would be 14 eighths. I guess you could figure it out. <laughs> now, this is a quilting ruler, but it's absolutely wonderful for garment sewing as well. You're always cutting something, and anytime you have something that's a rectangle or a strip, this is so nice. And this is an expensive ruler compared to other rulers out there. This is from Quilter Select. I'm going to put a link to this below. Sometimes Amazon has them, sometimes Amazon doesn't have them. So if I can find it on Amazon, I'll put a link to it. And they come in different sizes, but these are wonderful because they move around until you press down on them. And when you press down on them, they do not move and your fabric doesn't move underneath them. And then you can just cut it. So you can see my strip. My strip is perfect. And I cut it with that ruler. Wonderful, wonderful wonderful ruler. You only have to buy it once. How much is it? I don't know. It may be $40. It's expensive. 
but it is wonderful. I bought it twice because I have two houses and had to have one at each house. Okay, so here's my band. I'm not going to interface it. Okay, we're going to put a narrow seam allowance in it, 3 8 inch. Then after we get the seam allowance in it, which you're not going to be able to do with that pin in there, <laughs> we're going to fold it in half. We're going to fold it in half this way, all the way around. So then we're going to have a circle that's two inches wide by a little less than 26 inches long, okay? Let me get that much done and I'll be back. Here's a tip. If you want to do some ironing, it's a good idea to turn the iron on. <laughs> Just saying. Always do that or it spits and sputters. And you know my irons are always the perfect steam. I'll put a link to it below too. It's expensive. 200 and something dollars, but it's worth every dollar. I love the steam in this thing. Now, you've got to get your, your clapper. I'll put a link to it too. I know I always have new subscribers, and I put these things every once in a while, but you don't want to go back and look for an old video that has links under it, so I'll just link it below too if I can remember. It's Sunday, and it's a beautiful day outside. God, I'd almost like to go out on the lake again, but I don't know. Jerry's doing major repairs all over the house. He's working on baseboards now. You know, in the corners, we have high baseboards. They're like six inches tall, maybe taller. And you know where the corners come together? They open and close and open and close. And so he's caulking those today. And any place that, uh, like the shower, got it wet and it got messed up, he's fixing that. You think I'm a perfectionist. I'll have to follow him around with a camera one day. Problem is, I don't have that much film. I don't have that long a battery. <laughs> if he does it, it will be perfect. It may take three times as long as somebody else doing it, but it'll be right when he gets it done. And that's the way I am, too. My mother said, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. If it isn't right, it's wrong. And I had a teacher, the most marvelous teacher, and it was Janie Bennett. Taught me typing in shorthand. And I think I've told this story before. First day I went to her class. You know, mother told us all the girls had to learn how to type and take shorthand, and the boys went to college. Girls married guys that went to college, and girls learned to type and take shorthand. <laughs> well, my teacher in when I was a junior in high school, her name was Janie Bennett. And she was one of the typing teachers there. But anyway, she's the one I got. So the first day I went to her class. So the first thing she did was tell us we were all late because she expected us to be sitting at our desk when the bell rang, not walking in the door. So we were all late. And then she told us there were only two grades in her class. You could get an A or you could get an F. There was nothing in between. She said, if it isn't right, it's wrong. So, all of us went home that day and told our parents we didn't want to be in her class anymore. And several of the girls' parents felt sorry for them and let them get out of the class. Back the next day and a bunch of the girls were gone. My mother said, she sounds like a marvelous teacher. You're not leaving. Ended up being my favorite teacher of all time. Of all time. She was fabulous. They wouldn't let her teach now. There's no way they would let her teach now. You couldn't dare tell somebody that there was only an A or an F. She started a club. She said, everybody in here is in a club. I don't remember what the club was called, but it was really cool. She was just brilliant. There was some store. Um, it was Oklahoma City. And there's some store. I don't remember what store it was, but it was a, a girl's. It wasn't, it wasn't like Dillard's or Penny's. It was like a boutique and it was uh, women's clothing. And she had an arrangement with them where the girls could all go and choose an outfit for a fashion show. And it had to be something you would wear if you were a secretary. And so you would go there and you would pick an outfit to model. Well, I was shy, I was scared, I was nothing like I am now. I thought I was ugly, and I thought nobody liked me. I still think nobody likes me, <laughs> at least in my family. But, um, 
I just was scared, 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 scared. Of course, my mother was like, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And I'm like, I'm sick. I'm sick. I can't do it. You are not. You're going. So I picked a yellow suit, some kind of a yellow top and bottom, like a skirt and a jacket, you know. And so you had to come out and you had to walk across the stage. And then you had to stand still and then you had to walk the other way. I was just terrified. I'm sure my knees were knocking. <laughs> but my mother told me, you smile. You be sure to smile. No matter what you do, you smile. <laughs> and so I'm probably walking across the stage like this, but I'm going. <laughs> and so I got all done. And my mom said, you were the best one up there. You're the only girl that smiled. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. I divided this into fourths. The first fourth is the center seam that you sewed together on the sewing machine. That's your first fourth. So you fold it there and you go to the other side and that's your second fourth. This is half and half. Then you take those two and you put them together and then you find half and half again. And so when you get done, you have four pins and that means you have fourths in your band. You want me to quit shaking it around and hold it up close? See? One, two, three, four. Fourths. So now we're gonna take this giant neckline that I made. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't have any cleavage because it would sure show in this. <laughs> We're going to take this and we're going to divide it into fourths also. And I'll tell you right now, the shoulders do not get involved. The shoulder seams are not where the fourths are. So you have to, you can't just think, oh, it's the front and the back and the shoulders. No, 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 it's not. Match the shoulders together. Find center front. And put a pin there. Put a pin. Remember, this is super stretchy, and I am not going to stabilize this. When I sew this band on, that is going to be stability enough because it's smaller than this opening. Remember? What was the opening? 28 something? And the um, 29 and a half. And the band is less than 26. So that is going to suck this opening in. Okay, so that's center front. This is center back. That's your first two pins, center front and center back of your garment. Then you're going to take your garment neckline, open it up, and then you're going to match those two pins together, and then I put another pin there so they stay together. Then you're going to find half and half again. You're just going to pull it sideways, those two pins together, and you're going to find half and half again. All right? So here's one and here's one. So each one of those places gets a pin. Okay? You can use chalk. This is black. Nothing's going to show up on it, so I'm just putting pins and hoping they don't fall out. So that's one. This is two. So now I have four places marked. And I'm going to show you how far away the shoulder seam is from this pin. Take out your extra pin that you put in so it won't move. Alright, right here is your shoulder seam. You can see it because I taped it. Right here is my pin. So that's like an inch away at least from this shoulder seam. So here's where one-fourth is. It's not at the shoulder seam. Very, very important. Very important. So I now have four pins in the neckline of my garment, and I have four pins in this band that I'm going to sew on. I'm going to match these four pins on this to the four pins on the garment. I'm going to put it right sides together, and I'm going to sew all the way around. I've just sewn that band on all around the top of the neckline. There's the inside, 3 8 inch. Here's the outside. The band is going to stick up like this. So now, 
to finish it. Now I have not put any stay tape. I want it to be a little bit loose. I don't want it to be as tight as I had that last one. And when I finish this, it will be more stable anyway because what I'm going to do next is put this down here flat and then I'm going to sew all the way around the neck right underneath that seam. Right underneath it. And I am going to sew it with a straight stitch, not a zigzag. And the straight stitch will keep it, I've already sewn it with a straight stitch, by the way. And it still stretches, except where the stitch is. Okay, so that will stabilize it. And then I'm going to do another straight stitch down here. I usually do a zigzag, but I'm not. I'm going to do a straight stitch because I want it to be stable. I bring you over here with me to show you what I've done. Now, I have an open toe foot. I'll show you what an open toe foot is. This is an open toe foot. It means there's nothing between the toes. So you have really good eyesight. You can see right there in that space where you're sewing, see? I actually have two of them. This one, the walking foot won't work in. This one has a slash in the back, so my little walking foot works with it. So that's the one I'm using. So, first of all, I showed it, I uh, put it here this way, under the foot, to see where I wanted my needle to be, okay? So I decided where I wanted my needle to be, then I turned it right side out again. So I'm going to sew with this part of this foot right in this ditch here. That's why I like the open toe foot. It rides the ditch. Then my needle's going to go up and down over here. I'm going to be watching my little car drive on this road right next to that ditch. And I'm doing a 4.0 stitch length. And I've moved my needle over two places. Okay? This is a Bernina 740 and it has this wonderful, oh, what do they call it? Mmm. I can't think of its name right now, but it moves. It's a walking foot. It's a feed dog that feeds the top of the fabric, and there's already a feed dog on the bottom, as you know. Now, you have to constantly be checking the back to make sure that this flap that you sewed there, that seam allowance, is down. You want it down over this way, or the needle's not catching it. That even feed, I think that's what it's called, even feed foot. Yeah, that makes sense. Down, down, down. I love that. That is the number one reason I bought this machine, was for that. And I know you guys that have foffs, you already have it. I've never sewn on a foff. Peggy Sagers was saying she likes a Viking the best because it has some special needle position thing that you can use when you're putting zippers in. I'd like to see what that is. I've never sewn on a Viking either. Hey, I think I'm all the way around. I started in the center back and I'm back there. So I'm going to turn this down. I had it on four and I'm going to take one stitch forward and one back and then I'm going to cut my thread. And then I'm going to pray that when I turn it over it looks good. <laughs> all right, it looks really good. It's all sewn down on the inside, and what that does is it causes the band part, that little band, to stand up on your neck. So I'm going to go put this back on, and then I will see how good a job I did, okay? I'll be back. All right, here it is, my new neckline. I should have taken a picture before and after, shouldn't I? I didn't think of it. Well, it's in the video, and you all remember this is Fit Nice. Fit Nice System. By the way, she's got her books on sale. Oh my gosh. Regularly $130 and $55. Now, both books together, if you buy them both, are $99. Wow, what a deal. I already have the big book, and I've, evidently the books aren't on sale separately, so I guess I won't be getting the smaller book. But anyway, Fit Nice with the revised neckline. All right, I heard that. I was walking out the room and I heard that. I heard you say, well, for heaven's sakes, why don't you show us the whole dress? <laughs> All right, I hope you can see the whole thing. I don't know if you can or not. But you can 
can see it's very full, very loose, and extremely comfortable. It's just fit nice t-shirt, lengthened. That's all it is. And I have to go. Sideburns is downstairs saying he's gonna go light the grill. So I have to go. I'll be back. <sighs> just finished a steak this big. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Oh, it was good. It's 2.15 on Sunday. And I'm done with my dress. I'm really tempted to chop it off at the knees, y'all. <laughs> I really am. This is one of those really stretchy rayon knits. I guess it's rayon. It could, I'm not sure what it is. You can see I just attached it to my envelope. So I have now made this three times. That red top, the top with the leaves on it. You guys said, what pattern was that? What pattern was that? It's this fit nice pattern. And then the one I'm wearing today. I glued it down. And now I'm going to write a date on top of it so I know what century I made it in. I'll let you go for now. And you all have a really nice week ahead. I'll be back when I'm back. Bye for now.